An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your kind of style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you. To be to the fullest. And here we go. We're live on air. Hello, everybody, and um, welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. And back once again, we have Max Egan. Absolutely love this guy. Um, known him for a few years now and you know he's been doing his own work with with you know his radio show and all of his travels and this that and the other and do, doing his thing even even long before I met him and like Max is just a really 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 great guy and you know it is absolutely my privilege to know him and and be a friend of his and that's not to that's not to put him on a pedestal as max likes to say he's a regular human being equal to everybody else and you know that's the way i feel about myself and and everybody else too but um you know just giving giving credit where credit is due and just you know showing max's level of you know just his integrity and you know the type of person that he is he's uh definitely the uh the, the sort of person that um understands what being a a genuine friend is and um oh and and also just to let everybody know um straight out the gate um i di i did help max um set up his patreon account so anybody that wants to help him out that's like the only way he's making money right now so anybody who um wants to support his shows and um wants to see his shows um continue um just go to patreon.com forward slash max egan and um you know you can uh, help him out for as little as a buck a month and um, we also have a, uh, a Patreon account as well, patreon.com forward slash PSEC Media, P-S-E-C Media. So, welcome back, Max. Pleasure, brother. Thanks for asking me on. Sorry it's taken so long to get here. A lot of uh, trouble with the internet. That's what you do when you <laughs> oh. hard drives fail and you know, life in the Amazon. Yeah, it's so all good. We've got a limited window what? here today because I've been told they're coming to yeah down at some stage this morning so it's a never-ending saga but we're here well we can be anyway yeah plus to let everybody know there's a slight amount of um lag latency so me and max are not actually intentionally trying to interrupt each other it's just that by the but you know silences versus speaking can get slightly mistimed so when you think there's a spot there's actually not so it's um i get i guess um live stream bumper cars i suppose <laughs> oh it is it has just been an interesting year even so far um you usually um you know for for each year i just kind of tend to have an intuition about what the general theme of it's going to be and then i give it a name and these last few years so far have been right. I'm not sure where exactly this comes from. Well, of course I do. We're all connected to source and all that. But 2015 was the year of action. 2016, um, the year of discovery. And 2017, the year of integration. And, um, you know, as we know, especially for, like, discovery, there's a lot of 
purification involved and in order to to be purified you got to face your mess you know deal with your demons deal with your shit um get yourself sorted out so of course you saw a lot of stuff with you know social justice warriors and you know people being emotionally triggered and all sorts of crazy and um now in 2017 and like from my experiences, and you could tell me whether or not you've had similar phenomenon, my experiences both on, you know, just in the level of being me and what's being reflected in my own life, plus friends and family around me, and, you know, just on the global stage, like I see this like in, in the whole fractal, it's crazy. Like, right now, um, um, well, um, um, Max is asking if, uh, he wa he wants uh, me to share a link as far as the stream that's on now. Um, yeah, there should be. A, okay. Um, Sorry to have interrupted uh, you, Flo. I didn't mean to. Oh, it's it's oh it's all it, it's all good. Let me um uh, let me give you a a link that you can give to people so that they can you know listen to the stream and whatever, and you could say that you're live now with that um there there's the, there's the link for the for viewers who want to um who want to check that out you can now uh, you can post that okay. on your uh, on your social media oh good so please continue yep sure sure but anyway what i've noticed is um in 20 uh, um 2017 um, really seems to be very already starting intensely um, just everybody being triggered on certain issues and a, a lot of facing of paradigms and clearing and um, integration because there seems to be like this I'm noticing this major um, rise in compassion like I, I've noticed that everything seems to come in waves like if you if you go all the way back you know, first, there was like, you know, in the 90s and before, just the little fringe elements, the people who were awake, quote unquote, we did not have all this broadband and everything else. Then after 9-11, you know, the truth movement built up its momentum. But even though the truth movement is well intended, because of the massive um, lack of compassion within the truth movement, it's only been able to get so far. And like you've ranted on that at length, Max. I mean, definitely, and so have I. Um, but we, but you notice that everything, everything evolves up to a certain point, and then something new ends up blooming out of it. So first you have the oblivious mainstream and what ends up blooming out of it because of whistleblowers is the fringe stuff in the 80s and 90s. Then once the fringe stuff hit its its limit, the truth movement bloomed out of that synchronistically and because of 9-11, thank you elites. Well, now because of the, you know, the infighting and all of the intensity and all that within the truth movement, now there seems to be this for lack of a better word, and I, I don't even want to call it a movement, it's more like an idea whose time has come, as you've liked to explain it, I, I just have been referring to it as the wave of compassion that's just been bombarding the planet, and depending on how much shit a person has to clear or not, this wave of compassion can make people react very lovingly and i mean in a genuine way not like that new agey fake shit as a matter of fact i've i've seen it starting to shake you know some sense into some new agers and go and they're like wow the shun the dark stuff i had it all wrong i need to face the mess not ignore it um and then of course somebody who's got too much negative um and too much hate and too much prejudice and all of that built up in them they get hit by the wave of compassion and it's so different from that frequency so how are they going to react of course they're going to retaliate against it so i've also seen incidents where, where people get get super triggered just from somebody being polite to them you know and even and when it happens even the person being triggered seems confused because it, you know even from their perception it seems a little over the top even for them and not to mention it's already been scientifically proven that you know we are moving into a new area of space physically the photon belt does exist and all of that 
So there, there's definitely changes in, in frequency, changes, or just all this rapid change. Like there's this domino effect, this expansion. Like, like we're giving birth to a new and better world, but the earth is going through a lot of labor pains and there's no epidural drip. Have your experiences been, been matching similar observations? I'm just curious. Well, yeah, there's certainly waves of compassion that are happening, but I mean, the energy is really shifting. It's like people have had their, they've been ripped up by their, their anchors pulled out sort of thing. <laughs> and not only just, just pulled out, but like ripped out, you know, people are dealing with, with sort of energies that they've never dealt with before. And a lot of people are having a hard time dealing with it. You know, um, we're heading for some really, really bizarre times. We are. And there's so much division happening at the moment as well, but I think what we're we're really being given here is is a, a an opportunity, a chance for mankind to stand up and wake up to itself. I really do. I think this whole Trump presidency and everything that's brought this about, and everything that we went through in the last year, which was certainly a year of revealing and a year of discovery. It was a year where a lot of things revealed themselves. It was like a trial by fire for the empath last year. It really was. It was for me. It was for a lot of people that I know, like everybody that I know went through extremely rough times last year. So I think um, this year, I mean, it's so confusing. I mean, people are so confused at the state of the world with politically and energetically that uh, it's anybody's guess where we're going to go. But ultimately, it's going to come down to the people. This is what I've been saying all along. Even when uh, it became apparent that Trump was going to be elected, I said it's not going to matter what he does. It's going to matter what the people do with the opportunity that this provides. So, yeah, there's, there's some really bizarre stuff going on. And it's anybody's guess as to where we're going to go. But I think we're going to see a lot of stuff revealed this year. I think we're at a turning point. Um, if the people are prepared to put down this whole left-right paradigm and this um, identity politics that they're all getting involved in, because that, that's really what we've seen in this last election, they can put all that aside and realise that now is the time for the human race to unite and, and find a way out of this mess. And we will find a way out of it. You know, the problem is, I mean, with this last election, it's pr probably the only election that we've seen recently or the most most uh, predominant election where people, everybody who voted kind of voted because they hated the opposition. Most of the people <laughs> who voted for Clinton didn't didn't really want her in, but they just didn't want Trump in. And most of the people who yeah. voted for Trump just yeah. didn't want Clinton in. So that's really bizarre. That That's complete identity politics and complete division. And it, it's been designed and, and constructed that way. I mean, I think that... Um, all of this is a play, I really do. For a while, I was very excited. It's, the, that it's Trump a got shell elected. game. Well, yeah, for a while, I was very excited that Trump got elected, and I thought, well, this is this is going to shift things. This is something new that I, I don't know what's going to happen because I've really got no knowledge of Donald Trump. He's not someone I've researched or really investigated his life much at all. And I thought, well, this is a wild card. It could go any way. <laughs> so good that he got elected because it shows, I mean, out of everything, even if he is a player, it still shows that the people were pissed off enough with what they had that anything was better than what they had. And if it wasn't Trump, it would have been someone else. It's the same with what we saw in Australia in the last election, so many major parties and voted for independence. So whether that's good or not, it shows that people are annoyed with what they've had. They've just had enough of this system. And they want some way out, any way out. You know, they've, they've gone for Trump thinking that's, that's what's going to lead them to safety. I think they've been uh, played with that one. But maybe that will provide an opportunity for them to see that there are no leaders and actually have to take responsibility for themselves. So that's maybe what this year will be. If, if what you say, this wave of compassion <coughs> is happening, I mean, there's definitely something happening. The energy is really shifting. Everybody that I know can feel it, and I can feel it. Mm. It's just strange. The year, everything, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel normal. It almost feels <coughs> like we've entered a different reality, like the Mandela effect's real or something. We're in a parallel Oh, reality. yeah. I mean, there's you know, something. You know what? Oh, yeah, yeah, to totally. And it's becoming more and more, you know, apparent. Um, shit, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like really tired. And I'm just running on, you know, like caffeine and nicotine here. So everybody excuse any like any uh, fogginess or, or lack of clarity here. But one one thing that I've noticed that I think um, both you and, and the viewers will be interested in and this is just an observation of mine i'm not saying i'm right or wrong i'm just saying as the as the years continue to unfold this can be used as a little bit of a curiosity measure to help uh, vet things 2012 um as some people may or may not know 
is the middle point of the uh, procession of the equinoxes. There's 18 years on either side because, you know, on, on the cosmic scale, you know, our sun, our solar system is moving through space at, at near the speed of light. Well, at the same time, our planet is whipping around that sun at like 10,000 miles, you know, per hour. And at the same time, you know, we're, you know, spinning at a thousand miles per hour. It's, it's pretty mind boggling to think about, but so it's not like it's a line that the earth steps over to where it's like, okay, we have the procession. It's not like jumping from one sidewalk tile to, to the other. It's a, it's, it's this um, 36 year period. So if you, 20, 2013 seems to have been like, like year zero, like a recalibration period. 2012 is like that middle line where, you know, we crossed out of the old reality and in into the new reality but just because you go into something new doesn't mean you're instantly evolved like you know ju just because um a baby is born into this new reality doesn't mean they're instantly a college graduate things take time so I i've noticed that collectively as above so below because everything's a fractal metaphor of everything else um if 2013 is year zero if we look at how people acted in um, in 2014, metaphorically speaking, if we view the to the collective of humanity almost as, as like one person or one li little child, humanity became one year old in 2014. Before then, we weren't even birthed, right? So how do one-year-olds act? And how is the consciousness of humanity acting in 2014? If you look, you've got a match. You go to 2015, humanities two. Now, was he, was he, did humanity seem to be acting like a two-year-old in 2015? Oh yeah, big time. 2016, how does a three-year-old act? Was humanity as a collective whole acting the way a three-year-old would act in terms of development as an individual. Yes, it was. And 2017, are we starting to act for? Well, look at the perfect timing with this with this wave of compassion. Um, age four is really when the brain starts to starts to have more solid, you know, formation of um, neural networks to be able to handle more um, complex information, you know, both um, cerebrally and emotionally. So if we look at it in, in um, you know, that fractal metaphor, it seems that if we look at 2013 as year zero, and we think of the whole collective of humanity as, you know, being almost like its own individual person, and in 2013, humanity turned one, and, you, and as we look at the progression as we go forward in time, um, it'll be very interesting if that trend continues to keep aligned to those years as time goes forward. And if it does remain, remain aligned, then if 18 is considered species maturity, then we don't have long to go. And if we don't have long to go, then that means, you know, in less than 18 years, the world is going to be changing exponentially. And that's exactly what we have been seeing is an exponentially changing world. And then, of course, you've got the contrast, the dark and the light colliding, like hot and cold and steam, and you know. But um, I thought you might find that fascinating. Yeah, that's that's an interesting analogy. It's, it's it'll be quite interesting to see. I mean, I hope it does change that quickly. And like, if the world hasn't changed in in the last eighteen, in the next eighteen years, then well, God help us all. But uh, hopefully, yeah. we will have got out in this mess uh, way before then. I think there's been so much revealed recently. Like there really has. I don't know if you've been. Oh following yeah. The like the the work of George Webb with the Clinton emails and Dine Corp and. All the human trafficking. I mean, we've been talking about this for years. I've been talking about the fact that the human race has been farmed for years and years. And, you know, people mm -hmm. farming, that's what our government's been doing. I've been talking about the fact that there's a, a, a dark ring of pedophiles that exist behind this reality. And there's a whole reality that exists behind this society, which is essentially farming this society. And what's happened with the um, revelations in the Clinton emails is that now it's all provable. Now it's all there in their own hands. Everything we've been talking about is there. And you can see how all these wars are manufactured and contrived. You can see what the governments are really doing. It's not about helping anybody. 
It's about controlling people and harvesting people. That's what governments are doing. Harvesting not just people, but resources and taking over countries and just basically setting up their new world order and their control grid. And nothing's changed. With the Trump presidency, nothing's changed. But people are seeing it now. And the Trump presidency is such a, is such a debacle. It's such a, a circus that hopefully people are going to see, look, this is all such a play. This whole political thing is such a play. All this talk of national security and all these spy agencies and all these war machines and all this rubbish, we don't need any of it. We don't. So hopefully that's what we're going to see from this. So it's all happened for a reason. It really has. I mean, the last year, as, as hard as it was, it was very, very necessary. And what we're seeing unfold this year is one of the greatest opportunities we've ever had. I just say bring it on. I mean, let it get more ridiculous. Let Trump do more outrageous things and let people scream louder and louder about it. But just if you're out there watching it, just break out of this left-right paradigm. Don't join a side because that's what they want you to do. They want you to either be for Trump or against Trump and fight with the other guys. That's what they want. They don't care which side you join. They don't care whether you're for him or against him. They don't care what you believe in as long as you adopt a belief and you fight with people who don't have that same belief. So step back from all of that and realize that we're all one species here on this earth doing this together. And we have a real opportunity here to free ourselves from this criminal puppet show that's been running things for so many years. I mean, literally centuries, yeah. these, these people have been running things. And now we've got an opportunity to deal with that. And this whole farce of the Trump presidency will hopefully make people wake up to the power that they have. So, I mean, he comes across yeah. kind of as One a thing. real guy as well. You know, he's got Twitter and he's got all this sort of stuff. So the fact that he's the president and he's doing all this normal stuff, this is good. It shows he's a normal guy. There's just normal people on Earth here, folks. There's no rulers. Nobody yeah. has a right of ownership over you. I it's do, just normal. I do, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I do. I do like that. Uh, I do like that about Trump because we, as a society, have been taught to put social titles on a pedestal of authority and you know act as if you know someone has this title this means they must be better than them higher than them above them and to see someone that we're we're used to having you know this sort of um authoritative type of title then go ahead and very publicly just act like a regular human being for both better and worse depending on exactly what you're talking about you know but showing yeah. well, that there's always, what, there's what, always a disconnect what, there's always a disconnect between us and the president or whatever with with trump yeah. there isn't that there isn't that disconnect I mean, that's exactly. that's he might think that he's warming for the people that way but really he's created a vulnerable point because he's shown people that there's there's no real leaders here it's just people and it's a good thing yeah yeah here's here's also also why this is important and it's coming in perfect al alignment with things as well um like i said with um with this wave of, of compassion coming in and you know what i'm about to say is something i've known even even before then and i'm, I'm happy to see this wave coming in but um the biggest hugest thing that holds people locked into their complacency and and i mean you know as we've seen even people who are for the most part quote unquote awake or at the very least aware of things going on although as my friend melanie uh, or mel v from uh, ccn likes to say if you lack compassion you're not awake and that's not even a, and that's not even a diss on anybody but um you know that's just like saying you know fire's hot it's just you know it is what it is but i've noticed that with you know um compassion or if you want to call it higher vibrational frequency slamming into all of the with the negativity inside of all of us or lower vibrational frequency if you want to um call it that what then comes up for everyone to face has been the very thing locking people into complacency and that thing is the number one weapon that the elites have always used against us and that thing being shame because um one of the biggest things the the whole like um we're taught to devalue our our own self-worth and of course you know the bible even says that um we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves and a lot of people tend to think they're worthless pieces of shit so they similarly love their neighbors they love themselves but anyway when this compassion <coughs> starts to starts to hit the shame then people start having to face it and face their self-worth issues instead of going into complacent denial 
and you know it's engines like you know the fashion industry and all these sorts of things that have promoted the shame and what's been happening you know over the years as people have been awakening um, they, they awaken to certain aspects of how the mind matrix works, right? And like conceptually, cerebrally, intellectually, you know, they can, they can see and understand how the manipulations work, but because they're emotion and have feelings and, you know, there's no user manual telling them how to psychologically and emotionally, you know, address their own needs. And they've been, you know, caught in the Stockholm syndrome, you know, like everybody else has. Um, you know, basically there's, um, there's a lot of intensity as they shift because as they catch themselves in programs and they're aware that they're running a program, they're thinking, I should know better than that. I'm, I'm more evolved than that. I shouldn't be doing this to myself. This is self-sabotage. Then shame goes into guilt, which then springs a denial mechanism. So then it's like, no, then they don't even want to acknowledge to, the, to even themselves that they're doing something like that. So they're still kind of co-opted in that way by the matrix because the mental malware is kind of like retaliating. So it's trying to retaliate, lock you in, people become aware of it. And then instead of hitting the pause button and go, okay, I see what this is doing. Let's make a better choice than I would normal, normally make. Their neural networks are, are like freaking out. And this has been a very common thing. And I've noticed that people within their belief structures, in order for something to be fully real for them, it needs to meet a, a required misery level in order for them to accept it. Otherwise, if it's too good, too fast, with no um, misery contrast attached, then it's too good to be true. And because people are more afraid of their success than, than their failure, because they're used to failure, it's normalized, they're comfortable with it, they know how to navigate it. But success, they don't. So right now, human consciousness is starting to untangle itself from this mindfuck web to the point that I've even started seeing, um, you know, new agers start to shift away from the shun shun the dark and going more into you know like what like as you say information is just information and we need to take personal responsibility for our you know for our our own part in things so i'm even seeing you know a shift starting with new agers and it's very painful and confusing for them but they've decided that going through that pain and confusion is better than living this waking death zombie nightmare well you know they've been brutalized the new ages they really have i mean they've been waiting to ascend for the last 25 years and they're starting to realize that they were sold a lie <laughs> what they were sold was yeah. a, a doctrine basically of spiritual narcissism where you sit there and wait for life to end i mean what's that all about you're sitting there preparing for the afterlife what about this life you're here for a reason maybe you should participate maybe you wouldn't have to spend your time meditating to get away from all this dark stuff if you would actually look at it and address it you know and a lot of them are in that state of high vibration and they won't look at anything that lowers their vibration so really they're in a state of fear they're in a state of fear of processing certain forms of light and they're calling it love and that's what they're projecting yeah so i mean it's completely well, it's, bizarre. It's, it's, completely. it's the it's the wolf and wolf and wolf and sheep's clothing as it were what i what i like to tell them in these days that a lot of them are surprisingly receptive to this now they didn't used to be i t uh, when it comes to ascension i tell them you're all uh, the joke is that you're all already ascended you're just taking the 3d blindfolds off as you paradigm shift the 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 thing that you've been looking for you already are it and now they're yeah looking that's the thing like, whoa the that's been... profound yeah well we're the ones we've been waiting for i mean we always have been but like you say before there's so much complacency and this is what a lot of the movies and, and theater and all this stuff's about as well. You know, we see these movies of these dystopian futures and we look at them and go, oh, we're not there yet, so we're good. And we become complacent again. Well, yeah, we are there. It's just not as quite as overt as what it is in that movie or overt as what it is in that movie. But we are there yet. You know these what, things though? are pressure relief valves, you know. All these things, sports, um, all these things are pressure relief valves. If we didn't have action <laughs> movies and we didn't have sports, and we didn't have a war on TV, 
we would have been a revolution long ago. There really would have. But all of these things are, are released, release the pressure from us and put us back into that state of complacency. It's a very, very clever program, but it's very, very You know what, though, Max? There's one thing I've been I've been wanting to tell you that I that I keep forgetting that I that I just just now remembered because you kind of reminded me. Um, one thing that I've been seeing a lot of that you probably haven't seen um, really much of because you've been like way too busy to see this. But I also you know like to watch a lot of movies and TV shows. Of the, although of course I'm very selective about what I watch. And what I've noticed, um, as things are shifting more towards the positive, towards the light, whatever you, uh, any whatever euphemistic term someone wants to put on that, a lot of these TV programs are starting to be designed to deprogram people. Um, Disney, especially, has started shifting a little more to the light than the dark. Um, like one example is there's a show called Once Upon a Time. You may or may not be be familiar with it, but um, the show is total paradigm shift in deprogramming, and it's great. And it it's done subtly enough to stay just under the the elite's radar, a radar, and is not so overt that you know it's triggering people. It's allowing for the deprogramming to kind of kind of slip right in behind the scenes. Um, there have been other shows that I've seen that try to do too much whistleblowing too fast. They get on the elite's radar and all of a sudden the show is magically canceled. Surprise, surprise. But, you know, so there are good people that are in Hollywood now that are kind of learning the art of staying just under under the radar of the elite so that they can they can deprogram the masses through certain mainstream content, but without the higher ups noticing and putting the kibosh on it, because they're learning that when they when they put out too much too fast, the show gets canceled like that. Well, yeah, you know, but um, you've got to watch what they're putting out with the stuff as well. I mean, very often they're, they're spinning a lot of disinformation in these shows as well. Things like the X-Files. I mean, the X-Files exposed a lot of good stuff. It showed there was a deep state. And then it associated with all of this really bizarre UFO stuff and all this stuff, which is provable disinformation, and basically coined the term conspiracy theorist. So that suddenly conspiracies all became theory. So you've got to look at how they, they program people through these things as well. I mean, there may be a certain amount. Of, I'm, I'm very questioned about anything that, that shows what we would term awakening. For what is the other subtext beneath that? I mean, I'm not familiar with the shows that you're talking about, but you've got to look at the subtext and the um, the associative things that they associate these sorts of truths oh, with. Oh, I know. This is the way, oh, the I know, totally. Works is they, they put in enough... Um, real information to make it believable and now they put smatters of uh, smatterings of truth in there but ultimately it's all disinformation you, know, you get the truth and you embellish it to the point that it becomes unbelievable and associated with all sorts of stuff yeah. and people throw the baby out with a bath so you've got to watch that as well yeah. you know but i'll be interested yeah. to see the shows i mean hopefully there is some sort of deprogramming happening on television there must be people within oh, the, there the, is. the industry you know, concerned about the situation we are going as well so Hopefully, hopefully yeah. we will see a little bit more of that. But I mean, I recommend people throw their televisions away and just get involved in their communities. That would be a good thing. And this is why I want to close my Facebook accounts as well, because uh, I think we need to get off social media and get involved in life again. Social media is, is destroying life. It's destroying people's communication skills. It's pitting people against each other. It's creating so much animosity and division because people are just uh, taking text too seriously. Now, when you read stuff in text, yeah. you can't put emotion into it. You don't read the body language. You don't hear the voice. You don't really know what the person's saying. You just read it in text, and you take it as black and white. And, you know, people are taking each other the wrong way. They're taking each other to the extreme, and it's just creating more and more problems, I think. So I think we need to move hey, away Max. from social media. If we're going to use social media, maybe things like this, where we're actually talking and communicating to each other in real time, hey, not just text. Yeah, just just to let you know, I view social media as a tool just like any other. 
And as mu as true as everything you just said is, all that stuff does happen, there's a lot of good stuff that happens too. I mean, most of my experiences on social media have been absolutely positive. Um, I've made a lot of really great friends, a lot of which, you know, at minimum, you know, we've communicated in, you know, audio, video, um, you know, mediums privately and publicly like this. And, you know, even better, I've made friends in person and things like that. So, I mean, social media is just a tool. Most of my experiences have been positive. I've had a few negative ones. Um, so, I mean, what you're saying about social media is equally true. People got to be careful to not fall into that trap. But at the same time, I've had so many positive and uplifting experiences as well. And that aspect of social media is equally true and equally valid. So everybody's just got to have their discernment on high alert and give themselves sovereign permission to deal with the people that they resonate with and I think that's been another big theme of 2017 that I've been seeing. Um, a lot of people are starting to be more willing to to let go of things that, that no longer resonate and let those drift and welcome in new and better things. Because I think one of, one of humanity's biggest problems is that we've been taught to put up so many walls to keep us from knowing ourselves, to keep us from, from knowing other people. We put, we put up so many walls, and as we start to let go of the wall, and stop getting so control freaky then we're willing to let people go who need to go and we're willing to let people come in who need to come in instead of trying to control freak our, our own reality all the time well yeah yeah absolutely I mean there is a lot of positive stuff happens on social media but you know I look at Facebook even the name Facebook I mean it's a data miner it's a data miner that, that searches for people by facial recognition and you know, when I look at it, I mean, I use social media to share information as well. But with what they've done with, with things like Facebook, there's algorithms in place now whereby information just doesn't get shared. You know, I post stuff and people just don't see it because there's algorithms to prevent it. I mean, Facebook knows what it wants shared and it knows what it doesn't want shared. And there's certain things that just don't get shared. So, you know, wh how much how much of a difference am I making by using Facebook? I mean, I, I might reach an extra 50 or 100 people by posting a video there, but out of out of like forty five thousand, um, you know, combined followers on, on all the pages I've got, that's not really a lot of people. Uh, am I simply putting Matt, all those people who've connected with me on a watch list? So, you know, how, how Matt, much good am I doing? How much am I achieving by even using? You've had, you've reached a lot more people than than you think, and i and man, I get I give people this analogy all the time. Think of yourself as the stone that gets tossed to the center of the pond and the earth as the pond. Oh, yeah, okay? yeah, I, I know all that. That, sto I that, stone, that, that stone is not going to be able to see most of its own ripples, but you are making them. There, There's people that, that I know that your words have helped that you don't know. Oh, yeah, you have I know. No way but of I'm knowing they that. exist, but you know. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying with, with social media, with Facebook, I mean, the amount of people I'm reaching on Facebook as, as opposed to the amount of people that I'm potentially putting on a watch list, um, how, much, how much good am I actually doing by using Facebook? Because I know the government wants me to use Facebook. The government loves people to use Facebook because through Facebook, they get all the information that they need on everybody. They used to have to do years of of detecting on people and investigating on people to find out what they can find out in five minutes on Facebook now. So, you know, I just wonder, because I don't use mobile phones, I don't use credit cards, I just don't participate in the system and yet I use Facebook. And so I'm contributing to the, the government's data mining, I'm contributing to the CIA control grid by simply using Facebook. So I just wonder, you know, well, it's a just... fine line, I need to weigh up the pros and the cons. And I don't see, I mean, like I say, I mean, I've, I've met some great people and all that sort of stuff, and there are benefits to it, but um, the cons of it, I mean, the fact that it is basically a government-controlled data mining site, that's what it is. Um, you know, well, just, just right those thing? people... Just so, just those people being themselves online is going is if it's going to put them on a watch list at all has equal potential of putting in putting them on a watch list whether you're in the equation or not because that's how sophisticated the systems are. So just anybody saying anything online, everything's getting categorized and monitored and whatever. And I mean, it's not just Facebook either. 
I mean, it's as I like to tell people, if you want privacy, go to Mars. It's, you know, or out of the solar system because, you know, it's it's everything. You know, there's no there's no getting away from it. And I don't even think privacy is the biggest issue. I think censorship is the biggest freaking issue because, you know, once you have total total censorship, <laughs> you're fucking done it's game over you can you can have uh, breaches of privacy and still have a chance of you know uh, winning the long game but once you have complete censorship you've lost the whole game